I've only got a couple. I know, there's only like two. <sighs> All right. We're Are live you recording? Again. We're recording. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another video. Um, hold on. We're wearing the same clothes. I know. I'm literally just thinking, like, do we need to take our, like, sweatshirts off so we're wearing something well, different? Well, I don't because I'm always in the same thing. But <laughs> We're you not going to worry about it, guys. We're wearing the same exact clothes by coincidence as the last time we filmed the video, which was, like, a week ago, right? Absolutely a week yeah. ago. So we're not going to worry about that. But, guys, today's video we're going to talk about is the dumpster rental business passive because everyone and their mom right now wants passive income you know we don't want to work for our money we nobody want our does. money to just come to nobody us. wants to work right now at all i know no one <laughs> wants to work so i'm curious because i'm in the real estate space and i do a lot with rental property which you know is kind of um known as a passive income ha! depending upon how you structure <laughs> it right it's hilarious I, it's laughable you know sometimes when people think that it's passive completely but We'll get into that a little bit later, but I want to ask you, I mean, your opinion on like, especially the way you operate your dumpster rental business, is it passive? No, no, <laughs> not anymore. No. Um, I call it hybrid. I think I've said that a couple times, but hybrid it, passive, it's hybrid passive income. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when it was a uh, like total side hustle and I'm only doing like two or three dumpster rentals a week, mm -hmm. it probably felt a little bit more passive then because, you know, I drop one off on Monday, then I drop one off on Tuesday, then I drop one off on, you know, Friday, yeah. and then I pick them up periodically between there, uh, after work or before work. Um, and don't forget, when I lived in uh, Springfield, Missouri, the dump was like, it sounds gross, but it was like right next door to where I lived. I mean, it was a whole five minute drive, yeah. but somehow you didn't even know it existed unless you went and looked for it because I wasn't too far off the highway. Um, yeah, so then it, it, it felt really easy. Because it wasn't like a full-time gig, right? No, yeah, it's because I had my other job. What but got, here, hold, hold on real quick. We need to define what passive even means. I mean, like, okay, so in my money mind- Money falling in your pocket? <laughs> right, I mean, I mean, so like in my mind, passive income is like, okay, you put your money in, a, in the stock market mm -hmm. and you get a return back. Like that's truly passive. You don't really have yeah. to do anything. Um, real estate is a little bit more pass or less passive, but it still is some some way. Well, you get paid like three different ways in real estate. I mean, yeah, without, you get paid on the sale, you get paid on the rent if you want to rent, mm -hmm. and then you get paid appreciation in the appreciation. Know, the yeah, the yeah. So it's like I I think of when I hear passive income, I'm thinking like I'm sitting on my butt and money's you know flowing. The, the so, typical I'm sipping margaritas on the beach yes. type thing. So Which dumpsters, the dumpster in business, the way you're operating right now would not be that way. I mean, uh, to, a, to a point. No, yeah, it, it's not. And until, until you're paying people to do it for you, it probably never would be. Um, and even then you're still gonna work. I mean, even with all of your rentals and my rentals, mm -hmm. how often, knock on wood, I've had really good luck with that six unit that I have. Yep. I think the only thing on my list of things to do right now is go change a like air filter. Yeah. I've had really good. It depends on the unit, right? It depends. I had I have one that six unit very low maintenance. I had that duplex out in uh, St. Louis that was high maintenance. I was getting calls every month uh, for something here or there. Uh, so yeah, that was that didn't feel passive. Right. But. The dumpsters, it's an everyday thing now. And I mean, as soon as you go full-fledged, I'm a dumpster business and I'm not like just a side hustle, it is definitely not passive anymore. But it is hybrid because think about it. At the end of the day, if I put drive time, drop off and everything, I put two and a half hours of work into it, mm -hmm. but I bring in 200 to $500 in profit for two hours of work, yep. two and a half hours of work, it's like if you, I mean, sitting. That's better than me sitting on my computer all day mindlessly, like I right. did before. I mean, your time is is the driving and dropping it off. Um, but then when the dumpster's sitting there for the day or two days that it's there, it's kind of like you know passive. That's income. the passive aspect. So of let it. me ask you this: If you um, wanted to, like, what's the next step to becoming more passive? I mean, because like right now you're. It's a lone just ranger. all about. It's all just about freeing up time. Yeah. There's so many different ways I could do it. I could. But one thing, I mean, you're already doing is like things like Calendly. Um, oh, yeah. Is that, are you still using that? Yeah, I still use like a calendar system on my website. Like I don't want to talk to people on the phone if I don't have to. Yeah, so that I take is so many calls already. Time. Right. Yeah, so I don't have to worry about scheduling. And even when they do call me, I say, 
please go to my website and fill this out because I don't want to be taking the time to write it down. I don't want to miss it and then forget about it and then make a delivery and then I get a call when I'm at home. Hey, uh, where's my dumpster? Yeah. It's on my calendar. I get a reminder. That has been a huge time save. Like, I think that's like 10 bucks. What else have you done like that? Month? That's, that's, uh, I think, um, the, well, I mean, that's you, pretty much the biggest one. I yeah, mean, that, that you, checks well, so many boxes. You have a website. I mean, that's for starters. Like yeah. some people don't even operate me. with, yeah. right. Uh, you know, they're just like word of mouth. Like they might have some posters out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, my advertising is pretty easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, I, I'm on Google. And I'm on Facebook and people know me by word of mouth. So it's, I'm where people are going to search. Yeah. I don't have to push myself hard, which is absolutely key in any advertising. You want to be where people are going to be looking. You don't want to be forcing your product or your service down people's throat. Right. right. That's pointless. So again, like what's the next step of like passive, like if you were to try to like automate the business or, or make it more of a passive, passive business, what would you do next? I think think I know what he should I mean do. I should hire somebody right there you go yeah but there there's this there's this fine line that I ride with hiring I sound cheap by not hiring somebody right but at the same time as soon as I hire somebody I lose money right yeah easy but I also don't charge a significant amount so it's like if I hire somebody my prices need to be a little mm -hmm. bit higher right and it's just this fine balance of finding like the breaking point. Like yeah. I have to hire somebody. Well, don't flip this question on me when it comes to real estate because I'm the same way. Like I'm yeah. cheap. I haven't hired really anyone, you know, working full time for me. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do because it cuts into your profits. It so cuts much. into your profits a lot. But like in terms of freeing up time, there's other things I could do. It's I could, I mean, I'm making X amount of trips to the dump. Um, if I... I, I'm I'm a full believer in investing in things that make my life easier. Mm -hmm. I invested in a new truck because it made my life easier. Remember how many times I was under down. that truck? Yep. So I'm not under that truck anymore. Um, I I mean, there's I, I'm willing to spend the money on something if I know it's going to make my life easier. And if I, like I've said to you before, if I get a skid stir and a bigger trailer and I load these small loads into one and all of a sudden I'm only taking, you know, half amount of trips to the dump a week, that would free up so much oh, of my yeah. time. Yeah. So much. And I could, like, my billing would be easier because it'd be like, okay, you're good. You're good. I wait it. You're done. Like, all of that would be so simple. Yeah. But. Yeah, hiring someone is definitely, that's a huge step. I mean, because then you're paying uh, for their insurance, you know, work comp and all that stuff. And there's I mean, so there's, many things. I mean, you could always ask family, but you can only ask family so much yeah. after a while. Yeah. So. So if someone was to say, Clayton, hey, I want to start up a passive business, would you say that, hey, this can be, once you, it's, it's just about finding that scale. Like once you get to mm -hmm. a certain size, then you can offload some of the work to other people. Then it becomes a little more passive. Yeah, I mean, it's just like any business you have, technically any business you own where you're not the one working 100%, we could, we could say is relatively passive mm -hmm. or partially passive or hybrid, whatever we're calling it. Um, the owner, I used to work at Jimmy John's. He would come in like once a day for about two hours. And for whatever reason, he would jump on the line or he would, uh, he would, um, his, his name was Tim. He was awesome. Work on like the, what? he would work on the register or okay. something, but he was always like overseeing it for like two hours. And then he would go back to golf. He would golf twice a day. No way. Yes. And That's I awesome. know he was doing well. I know he was doing really well, but he made, he made it a point to come in and check. So is that really passive? No. And I'm sure there's times well before then where he was on the line 100% of the day, but he's reached that age and that development in his business um, where he doesn't have to be there. Yeah. So it, I think we live in this instant gratification. I want the quick, quick, quick rich scheme, yep. which is kind of what suckers people into businesses like this. Yep. Um, and I want the time. I want the time back. But the thing is, sometimes you got to put in the time to get the time back later. Right. Yeah. And ooh. and you're still in that phase of like, yeah. putting in that work. Like we kind of talked about with real estate. It's like that CapEx. Mm -hmm. So like I'm looking at a deal right now where I think in 10 years, the property would be worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But that initial investment just stresses me out. Yeah. I mean, because it's I know that I'm going to have to put that money forward and put in that time. And then I have to sit there and wait yep. to make that money back. 
it's no different. Your business isn't going to just 100% that day. It's right. like, I'm passive. Like, I don't have to do anything. And I'm just making money hand over fist. And the thing that I think uh, not enough people think about is, okay, so like if you're, if you have a business that you're only making, um, I'm trying to think of an example, but like not a whole lot of money per hour, mm -hmm. like you got to value your time somewhere. So like right mm -hmm. now, like you're making hundreds an hour probably when you really figure it out, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, $100, $200 an hour dropping these dumpsters, that's kind of worth your time. It's worth my time now, yeah. But if you have a side hustle or like a, a business where it's like, oh, you're only making 10 bucks an hour, that's a business you probably want to be more passive. You don't want to waste too much of your time on that because mm -hmm. your time is worth more than 10 bucks an hour. Yeah, if I'm spending a bunch of time driving but I'm making X amount of dollars, why, why would I complain? Right. But eventually it's like, well, I want that time back. Yeah, eventually your time, I mean, your time is the most valuable resource. I mean, we talked about this a couple days ago where I was just like, okay, uh, I made X amount of dollars this week doing this, but you sat at home watching YouTube videos, but then occasionally- People are gonna think that's all I really do. I know, but, but occasionally you're doing your research and you're finding all these deals, and in one deal, you made what somebody else makes in a year sometimes. Don't tell them yet. I'm that's, just saying. That hasn't been announced. I know, but you know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. And it's a time versus money thing. It's like, do I wanna spend my time investigating deals like that? Or do I wanna get, like, spend my time doing a nine to five or doing my new business or whatever it is. And my, I'm in like this happy medium. Yeah. Where it's like, I like to evaluate occasional deals that eventually will be what I say would be passive or real estate deals or storage deals. And then I've got my hybrid income of dumpsters. This so. is like a whole nother conversation. Oh, and, man, and I could is. get like down the rabbit trail on this. Like, how do you value your time? What do you work on? Like you hear the saying, like you know, don't be a jack of all trades because then you're not a master of one. Oh, uh, that's like, like you that's and I, me. Yeah, we've that's talked about me. this. Oh. So we'll have to keep that for another video. But I mean, ultimately, it comes down to what do you want for your life? You know, do, how 100%. much? Yeah, like it's it. like do you want just a little bit more? I think flexibility has been something for me. Yeah, it's like what is it right now? Three, like four, probably dark room. Yeah, down probably here. like four thirty or something. Four thirty. Right now, at my last year, I would still be buried in work, and I'd still have another four hours, and I would have started at six a.m. And you hated your job. I was miserable. I was making really good money. Yeah. I mean, it was really nice. I, but the thing is, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't even get to enjoy my money because I was too afraid to ask for a vacation. Yeah. And when I say vacation, I mean like Monday off. Yeah. I. Yeah, I know. Isn't it? Fun I should have known when they said, "Oh yeah, we don't have." Uh, like you don't get X amount of days off. You just tell us when you want it. Like then you have the whole pressure of the entire team. Like how many days off have you had this yeah. year? It's like, oh, I don't know. How many have you had? And nobody wants to take off because nobody wants to be seen as a slacker. But just being stuck oh. in a job that you hate, like that. It was so bad. It's just not worth the money. No, me. it wasn't. It it was it was rough, man. Yeah. But like PTSD. But yeah, I mean, you you really start to realize what you value. And mm -hmm. for me, it's just been flexibility and I know this sounds weird but security considering I don't really have a w2 job w2 jobs are I, I've never felt more secure mm -hmm. when I have a w2 job my I know my medical bills are taken care of I know everything's good um, I do have my commission job which as a mortgage lender I'm a mortgage lender um, where I, I still do uh, make enough that I can get benefits and everything yeah. but um, at any point if something goes terribly wrong, the economy crashes, I don't have that job anymore, nobody's buying houses, or um, my rental property burns down, or my dumpster rig um, crashes and burns in the river, I don't know. It's like I have three other sources of income that I know that I will not be absolutely destroyed. Yeah. Hopefully. It's it's one of those things, everyone's gonna have a different opinion, because yeah. like some are gonna be like, oh, don't waste your time with all this other stuff, folks, and get super- Super good at one successful thing. Successful at this. Mm -hmm. But I'm definitely of, you know, my dad's the same way, where like, we're kind of like entrepreneurs, like mm -hmm. you're the same way, where like, you've got all these ideas, and mm -hmm. so, I don't know. We're just figuring it out, guys. My kryptonite is my ideas. Yeah. Yeah, I get calls, what, three times a day. Okay. I got this Twice. crazy idea. <laughs> All right, yeah. we need to head out. But uh, yeah, so if you guys are interested in the dumpster rental business, go check out Clayton's uh, channel, Rolling Ops, on YouTube. Um, link down below. 
before they jump, because everybody's always watching these because of that word dumpster. And I just want to tell everybody, dumpsters aren't for everybody, right? Yeah. Can you think of like any other passive, or semi-passive ways to make money? And oh. okay, we got real estate, which we're always going to stick to. That's like my retirement in some way. We've got dumpsters. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm putting you on the spot here. Yeah, I mean, but this isn't like really like I invest in the stock market and some days I make money, some days I lose money. It's I don't know if you'd consider that passive or not. Laundry. Like laundry laundry mats. like laundromats, yeah. Vending machines. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, and with like little investment you even have to put in. When you start a dumpster business, you're putting a lot of money in. Yeah. Unless you put it on a credit card like you did. Whoops. Yeah. We'll have to there's make so it, many. We'll have to make a video about that we'll because a there's a lot that. of yeah, a lot of different passive things or semi-passive things that, you know, it, over time it just adds. But up. here's the thing: we touched on this earlier. Like ultimately, it's going to take work to get it going, and it's too not, many people want to yeah get rich quick. Um, I don't want to put any money into it. I just want to start making money. You know, it's just like those uh, dropship guys on yeah. on YouTube. It's like they. Anytime there's, it's that easy, you know. Look, look at this mansion I live. Look at this sports car I have. I just want to say, if I ever get to the point on YouTube or anywhere where people see me driving those sports cars or living in those houses, I hope that you guys see videos like this, where I'm sitting here in a Carhartt, a you know, cut off shirt in Kyle's dank basement, <laughs> making YouTube videos. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, like, let's be honest. Well, that's that's the fun of it. To, I mean, I think for both of us, it's like that journey of like, yeah, it's the growth. Every day it's a grind. And Those other guys, those gurus, they just they just like popped out of nowhere. If like, you truly think that that passive income exists, I mean, it. I don't think it really does. I mean, unless you're super lucky and I don't know. You know trust whatever. funds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to get out of here. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, I guess we'll uh, make another one soon and we'll see you later.